The judiciary is the last hope of the common man, rightly so. It has over the years helped to shape democracy with many landmark decisions. But recent developments in the sector show that it is fast becoming a system that may be losing its steam and fierceness. This is because of accusations and counter accusations of corruption among the top echelon of the judiciary, unethical conduct and deeply eroded public confidence in the integrity and impartiality of the judiciary. Last week, 14 justices of the Supreme Court accused the now <laughs> former chief of Nigeria, uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN Justice Tanko Muhammad, of mismanagement of resources and poor leadership. How can the judiciary reposition itself? Joining us in the studio to discuss the push for judicial reforms and probity is lawyer and human rights activist, Femi Falano S.A.N. You're welcome to this show. Thank you very much. Good to have you guys. What did you make of the story when it started to unfold? I, I, think, oh, we should, I, I think I would like to start with your first sentence. <laughs> <laughs> the judiciary is not the last hope of the common man. In a bourgeois society, you might say it's the last hope well, of, technically, the rich, technically, of the rich. Technically. Oh. Because the poor have no access to the courts. Hmm. It's only the rich that can access Get to the, the Supreme court. court. If you, if you... If you attack a poor man, if you mm. slap a poor man, he will say, God day. <laughs> but the rich man will say, I'm taking you to, to court. court. So that, that, that's the difference. Even the lady of justice, right, who is blindfolded, has had the scarf removed and sometimes raped by the rich. You know? wow. But on a very serious note, the judiciary, no doubt, has attempted to stabilize the policy through a lot of far-reaching decisions, or what you might call landmark judgments. Uh, in spite of the allegations oozing out of the judiciary, or what you call the top echelon, echelon of the judiciary, um, I would like to say that, unlike other arms of government, the judiciary is the only one as are, that has developed an internal mechanism for dealing with allegations of corruption and the rest of them. If anybody sends a petition to the National Judicial Council, you'll be sure, except it's a very frivolous petition, it's going to be attended to. And any judge that has been indicted or alleged will have to be asked to answer uh, uh, necessary queries. In this particular instance, now I've made the point, those allegations will have to go to the National Judicial Council. Because that is the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Federal Republic of Nigeria and Ndagiwa, you know, which is to defer that any allegations of corruption, mismanagement of funds, money laundering, and so on and so forth uh, against judges will have to go to the National Judicial Council for investigation and perhaps indictment before the anti graft agencies can, or the police can chide them. So I believe the proper thing has to be done in this case. So notwithstanding the fact that uh, the Honorable Justice Tanko Muhammad has uh, resigned. Con considering that, the Senate has said that they will uh, have to look into uh, this issue by probing the, the, the case, especially from the memo that was written by 14 justices. What is the place of the Senate in this instance when the NJC, NJC is going to handle the issue internally? The Senate has no powers to look into them. With profound respect to uh, the chair of the Judiciary Committee, Honorable, I mean, Senator uh, Amidele Apoyemi, who I have my respect for. Uh, as far as the law is concerned here, you have the National Judicial Council empowered by the Constitution to examine uh, such allegations. And in this case, I must confess, the National Assembly has itself to blame for the problems we are currently encountering the judiciary. How is How that? So? <laughs> you know, Section 81 of the Constitution prescribes that the President shall submit the budget of the country to the National Assembly 
for consideration. And there is a decision of the court, uh, in the case of Olisa Agbakova and the National Assembly, to the effect that the budget of the judiciary will have to be prepared by the National Judicial Council. And uh, once it is prepared, it shall be submitted to the National Assembly. What the National Assembly has done over the years is not to look at the budget, just to pass it as it is sent to them. And this is causing the problems. You must know what you are budgeting for, what you go for, replacement of cars, of judges, recurrent expenditure, and the rest of them. But there are no details. And it's against the Constitution to pass a budget without Debate. examining it. You know, even the, 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 the items are not set out, not outlined. And the president, again, also signs such a bill into law. So we're just told in the last two or three years, 110 billion naira is voted for the judiciary. We do not know what the items are for. So it's been very difficult for some of us to campaign for increase in the budget. Because we don't know what the budget is all about. And this is what has caused some of this problem. And you also have a dangerous situation where only one person, only one person decides on the budget, the budget of the judiciary and also implements. Again, it's not our it's not part of our law that judges will manage funds. So you must be busy writing your judgments. judgments yes. Hear any cases. <laughs> and that is why the chief registrar of the Supreme Court and the chief registrars of the respective courts are assigned by law to be the accounting officers. So judges are not, are not expected to manage funds. Yeah, but this has been the, been the case not only with the Supreme Court, but... Uh, uh, court heads. No, that's why I'm also country. talking yeah. of chief register of the Supreme Court. Another court, court chief register. Yes. Mm. Because <laughs> if we had all listened to Justice Ejembi Echo, when he retired last month, this will not, this perhaps will not have happened. In fact, his lordship was calling, was inviting the anti graft agencies to examine the accounts of the courts, not just the Supreme Court. But if we have a situation where we have three equal, equal arms of government and the president, like the executive, is supposed to submit a budget, we expect a situation where the judiciary, as a third independent arm of government, also submits a budget in like... In, that in, is in, the in, decision of the court. So how helpless is the court or the judiciary, let me say, how helpless is the judiciary to ensure that that happens? You see... If you go back to the protest letter by the 14 justices of the Supreme Court, for me, the judges were particularizing. They were really dealing with details, specifics. Specifics. But some of these problems are institutional. Some are even self-induced. If there is a judgment of a court to defect, that, in fact, two judgments, one by Bakoba, one by Justin, that's the judiciary staff, mm, yes. you know, Association of Nigeria, to the fact that the judiciary shall have financial autonomy. But what has happened? Judges, if, instead of insisting on the implementation of both judgments, judges go camp in hand to the executive to ask for funds, to run the courts. In fact, you, I mean, you report this from time to time, when governors are giving out cars to judges, you know? Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, the chief judge is very happy. Exactly. Very happy, mm -hmm. will give a speech thanking His Excellency. Why the governor will call the tape? I mean, it's only a Nigerian phenomenon. You didn't manufacture the car. So why are you cutting a tape? The cars are ready. Distribute them. And stop wasting money on unnecessary ceremonies. But it is meant to humiliate our judges. But the point I'm making is that it is self-induced. The chief judge has no business going to the governor to collect cars for judges. That should be part, that should be taken from your own budget. That's the point I'm making. Does it bother you that uh, the last two 
um, CJNs have left the office under the cloud Fashion. of corruption. Does it bother you? No, uh, uh, no, it is not. It is. It is very strange because it is often said that judges must live above board, above board like scissors. Why? But you know, <laughs> in, in a highly corrupt society, it would be strange not to have corrupt public officers at all levels. So the judiciary is not. It cannot operate in vacuum. We're part of this society. However, as I said, the judiciary has a way of dealing with its own, unlike the executive and the legislature. Right? So in the case of the judiciary, one, there are allegations of misappropriation of funds or misconduct. The NJC will look at it. And it has to happen in this case. We're still looking forward to the autonomy of the judiciary, like we always and often expect moves have been made at different times. If that step has to be taken for us to... No, we don't need to take it. Okay. It's already taken by the Constitution. All right. Section but, but we're not seeing very clear. Section 123 of the... It's very clear at the level of the state. Judiciary, all the funds appropriated for the court will have to be paid to the head of the court. Through the NGC. But what happens now is that the executive, arms of the executive, I mean, arms of, I mean, the executive find it difficult to recognize the independence of the judiciary. Professor Ishesake. It's all meant to subvert democracy. Professor Ishesake was on this show uh, last week in which he was complaining about the, the justices themselves, saying that the justices themselves who are now acting as though they are like uh, pure, really gorgeously powerful people of judiciary. He said, uh, he said they, they, they themselves too are not really pure, and that uh, very uh, and that uh, you know you know we should not look at this situation as though it was just Tanko that was a sinner. Yeah? That is a it's a, it's a, a chamber of sinners. Well, well, <laughs> well, well uh, as far as. The protest no, that, those are my words, not his no. words, yes, yes. As far as the protest letter is concerned, mm. allegations are made, right? In the rejoinder by the CJN, all, by the former CJ, the chief justice, all he said was that the Supreme Court justices were dancing naked in the marketplace. Mm. And as I said in an interview on Sunday, I saw it. by also going public, yeah. His lordship was also dancing naked, naked. in the marketplace. Yes. But what is important, allegations have been made. They have to be investigated. Further justices are indicted, so be it. But as far as we are concerned, we must take these matters one after the other. I do not have, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 for me, I'm not privileged to engage in a fallacy of generalization, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather want to deal with specifics. That's, that's a clever way. Now, let us even move to some other issues. Look at uh, Ekwere Madu now. Uh, we are trying to defend him in court. What is your view on that in the, in the UK? I have no problem with that. Uh, a, a precedent is being established. Whoever is charged in the United Kingdom or anywhere, Nigeria will have to. Yes. Oh, yes. Have to defend. <laughs> yeah, because there is equality before the law. Mm. Exactly. I, I, I do hope that the government appreciates the implication. Yes. Of sending lawyers or mobilizing lawyers or paying lawyers to defend a citizen charged with a criminal offense outside the country. Yes. I have no problem with that, but Nigerians must be treated equally. Henceforth, henceforth, any Nigerian charged for any offense whatsoever abroad will have to be defended by the government. It's a good development. It's a good development. I think when this is what uh, we see Professor uh, Bolaji Akinyemi was talking of uh, citizen diplomacy. This is yeah, yeah, I think they want to practicalize but, it. But, but this, 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 this is dangerous. If I, if I have uh, Akara, Akara and, uh, 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 a court matter in, uh, in North London, uh, I will say, okay, Nigeria, come and defend me. No, even if you are caught, <laughs> even if you are caught with drugs mm. once you establish a precedent 
equals must be treated equal. Well, but, those, but those are the ideals when it comes to no, the, the no. practice of you it. You see, this country yeah. has, is run, should be run by law. Not by sentiments or whims and caprices of the people in power. If you are sending a delegation to the United Kingdom, because a big man is charged with an offense, you must also do the same. You know, to other citizens. Mm. I have no problem with it. <laughs> In fact, I like it. <laughs> yes. Well, so that, that tomorrow that, when that, anybody that. is charging the United Kingdom, you know, unlike here, mm. a Nigerian will go to court. You must defend me. Yeah. Yes. It will become an absurd thing because it will get to a situation where, where in the budget they'll say, okay, there's has to be a, 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 a budget cap of course. for... For cases abroad, no, once, whether in Australia the, 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 or, in, or, in Rwanda, or in Rwanda or China, or China. Or China. Or China. <laughs> once you start it, there will be no end to it. And I do hope the government appreciates the financial implications of this, yes. of this adventure. So if it's a 419 case, oh, I said, or a drug I said case drug in, in case. Thailand. Oh yeah, drug or, related. Or in, South, or in South Africa. <laughs> or in South Africa. Yeah. You have to defend your citizens. All right. Okay. So that's what we are being told now. <laughs> All right, let, let's keep an eye on, on the positive side of it then. But let's take you to Zafara State. I know you've Thank been you. following this uh, development there. And uh, the security situation has been so bad. And in fact, some persons have interpreted the governor's, uh, Governor Matawali's uh, move to call for people to defend themselves as a frustration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the chief of defense staff had responded to that, saying that the governor doesn't have the right or the powers to call for that. What do you make in the eyes of the law? What do you make? Because no, we call I, the governors I, the chief you see, security in the officers. Place, in the first place, yes. the chief of defense staff will have to appreciate that we're operating a democratic system. Of, this is not a military regime. No chief of staff, no general has the right to call a governor to order. The governor has been elected by his people. Exactly. Let us appreciate. In fact, that is why in some countries, I think Eritrea and a couple of countries in Africa, it is stated in the Constitution that the Minister of Defense shall be a civilian. So if, you are, if we have transited from military rule to democratic rule, we must operate under the Constitution. So if the Chief of Defense staff has some complaint, there are procedures for dealing with it. The army could have written to the House of Assembly of that state that can call the governor to order. That's number one. Number two, when I read the publication, I think on Sunday, that the governor has asked people yeah. to defend themselves. Yeah. Well, not, not really to bear arms. He was asking them to ap apply for licenses mm -hmm. so that there will be control. Yes, that's to bear arms. Yeah. Now... Uh, frankly speaking, I was flabbergasted. <laughs> and I had to contact the governor. I mean, I had to do that because I wanted to be sure if what I was reading was right. Mm. And his, his Excellency was polite enough to call back. I think he was on a trip when I called. And I said, this is what I've just read, Your Excellency. And he told me that we have tried all options and they have failed. What do you expect me to do? That's what I said earlier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, 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 earlier. Now, my <laughs> position is this. Where there must be control so that such, what do I call, catablanche, you know, so that the, uh, the, the directive is not abused. I would rather suggest, and I have made this suggestion to governors, you have set up security network in Lagos, it's called uh, Neighborhood Watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another pass in the west is called Amoteku. In the east, you have Ibibiago. In the north, you have Isba mm -hmm. and the rest of that. In the, no, in the northwest. Yeah. In the northeast, you have JTF, JTF. civilians. Yes. My position is this. And frankly speaking, I think the governors will have to sit up. The police powers in Nigeria are not vested exclusively in the president. No. They are vested in the Nigerian Police Council. And the Nigerian Police Council is constituted by 39 people, three pub federal public officers. The rest are the governors, 36 state governors, 
are members of the Nigerian Police Council. That body is empowered to administer, organize, and supervise the Nigerian Police Force. Unfortunately, that, those powers have been left exclusively, you know, to the hands of the president. The president. Sometimes uh, the as commander-in-chief. Yes. Sometimes the inspector general of police. So the governors will have to take control and go to the meeting. They have said the body never meets. Time. Yes. And in requisition a meeting. Yes. We have generous insecurity in our country. I mean, the last time I think last year, the president said two governors came to see me from the southwest, complaining about insecurity. Yes, last and year, ask them go back. go back. <laughs> How would they go back and secure their people? It is by ensuring. That those security networks are empowered, the officials are empowered to bear arms. Because you can't, you can't ask a man who has a dengon, shakabula, to go and confront criminals with AK-47, come action and the rest of them. So that is why the governors will have to, and the law is there. In 2003, when President Obasanjo was trying to create uh, the civil defense court. Yes. I, I contacted some governors. This is the time to ask. This is the time to ask for state police because Section Two One Four of the Constitution provides that there shall be only one police force in Nigeria, and there shall be no other one. So, if the president decided to create another police force, you too it's should your through own. your members in the National Assembly insist on state police. Unfortunately, they weren't listened to, and so the National Assembly created. Uh, Civil the Nigerian Corps. Civil uh, Defense, Defense Corps. Uh, Corps, you know. Now, between then and now, the federal government has empowered the EFCC, ICPC, Customs, Federal Road Safety Corps, Correctional Center, all of them, to bear arms. Now, if they are not abused, why are state security networks not allowed to bear arms? Get, the governors may have to go to court. Because what is good for the goose is good for the gander. And uh, it's even discriminatory. Because Sam, as a responsible editor, can apply to the Inspector General of Police or the President. I want a license to bear arms to protect me and members of my family. You know, they won't give me the license. <laughs> <laughs> but on a very serious note, if they can give you as an individual, I've challenged governors. Go to court. If a few people can be given licenses to bear arms to protect themselves and their family member, why not give 10,000 licenses to young people in Lagos to bear arms to protect 20 million people? Mm. And it's going to be difficult for the government, for the yes. federal government, yes. to defend this position because Section 42 of the Constitution has abolished discrimination. On the basis of class, gender, religion, class, whatever. So if a few people are defended, right, <laughs> all of us must be defended. And that is my position. Maybe, maybe the, thing, maybe the thing for Matawale to do is to get his people to line up on the streets of uh, Zafana <laughs> Street and say that they are all waiting to get a uh, 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 gun license. Is that is that is that no, 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 social, no, no. A social upheaval. Fr frankly speaking, <laughs> frankly speaking, I think the presidency has deliberately uh, allow the situation. Yes. Because in Borno State, in Borno State, the JTF personnel, mm. JTF officials, civilian JTF, the civilian JTF uh, members are allowed, are given uh, licenses, licenses to bear arms. Mm. Yes. Because you can't ask them to go and confront terrorists yes. with, uh, with bows and arrows. And arrows. Uh, bows and arrows. Uh, no. All right. So I think we can keep going on and on and on. It's always. Uh, <laughs> A feisty moment of intellectual uh, display uh, with, and, and legal uh, gymnastics with uh, <laughs> uh, human rights lawyer. I call him uh, the best of his generation, Femi Falana. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you show. so much for coming. Thank you Thank very you. much. My Thank pleasure. You. Yes. Right.